So I got called out to this Dakin Mini Split because it's not cooling very well and it's low on a, a refrigerant charge. So I thought I'd do a video on it and how you, you can go about adding refrigerant to a mini split. And one of the problems is when you add refrigerant to a mini split is that since they have variable speed compressors and they have so many sensors adjusting everything along the way, you can never get the pressure exactly right. And so because of this reason, most manufacturers would say just to completely empty it and then fill it up to the correct amount of pounds. So say it holds like five pounds, then you would use a weight scale and you would let in five pounds. You know, always read the manual for the unit to be sure what it is. But most will state that, you know, you completely recover all the refrigerant from it. You completely vacuum it down like it's a new install and then you add refrigerant in by the pound. So if it's five pounds, then you would you would use a refrigerant scale and you let in five pounds of refrigerant and you'd shut it off as soon as that five pounds went in. And that, that's usually the way that they suggest doing it. Now, now, a lot of techs will just add a little bit in like this unit right here. It is cooling a little bit, but not very much. So it, it's obviously just a low on a charge. And so a, most techs would just add a little bit in and then check it and see if it's cooling a little better and and then leave it at that even though that's not the official way to do it so i'm going to show you how you can do this even though if you do want to do it correctly like i said is you got to completely recover all the refrigerant from the unit pump it down and then add in the correct amount by weight back into the system so that would be the correct way to do it so with that said i'm going to go ahead and show you how how you could just add in a little bit and just get it close Okay, so here I am, I'm on the outside unit here, and I just wanted to show you that, you know, where, where you'd find this information on the refrigerant type and the amount it holds. So, you know, most of these are R410A systems, there it is. And this system holds 2.09 pounds. So the official way you would do this and get it right is you would completely recover all the refrigerant that's in the system with the recovery machine. You would use a box of R410A, you put it on a weight scale, and you would add in 2.09 pounds on a completely empty and vacuum down system. So that's the, that's the way, the official way that you do this, just to let you know. And, and so, but you can add in a little bit at a time until it starts to cool. And I'll show you how I do that. And you, so you can get it close. The, the one thing is, is that you, if you get too much in, it won't work. So you don't want to go over whatever you do on that. And one of the things is, is you're going to need a box of R410A. Officially, you need a EPA 608 card to buy this, which I do have, which I have and like most HVAC techs will have. Um, but for some reason, I've been buying this on Amazon for the last couple of years since it's, uh, it's like a low cost place to buy it. And they never asked me for my EPA 608 card, so I don't know what that's about. But officially, you are supposed to have a card when you buy it. But if you go on there and you want to get a box of it, you probably could just get yourself five pounds or so I don't know exactly what's going on with that I'm not affiliated with anything with that I do have an EPA 608 card so I'm good to go there and next up you're gonna need some gauges and so these are the gauges that I'm using they're just cheap low-cost gauges I'll put a link down below for all the stuff that I'm using here and you're also gonna need a small mini split adapter for these units all mini splits use this adapter just to go on to the refrigeration line basically it like I said I'll put links down below for everything that I'm using here so the first thing we're gonna do is there's usually a cover here I already got that off uh, each of these will be a little different but it's pretty much the same and so you just take that cover off I'm gonna go and loosen up this cap right here so I get to the Schrader valve these, these caps are to let refrigerant in so it's not these it's just this one cap right here and it's on the fatter line, as you can see, which is the low pressure line. We're gonna, it's the only, gonna be the only connection on a, most mini splits. Like 95% of mini splits only have this one connection. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, take this yellow line off the back here. It's this middle yellow hose. And we're gonna take the middle yellow hose we're going to connect it to the refrigerant. I got 
that connected there. We're gonna take this blue hose, take it off the back. Just gonna hook this up to the small adapter. And as quickly as I can, I'm gonna screw this on. A little bit's gonna come out, so you just wanna go as fast as you can here. Okay, so that's all in there. So basically we just have, you know, everything's shut off, all the valves are shut off, but we're only gonna be using this blue side. So I have the blue hose just going straight in through the adapter. Be sure to do this last because the refrigerant will come out. So you, you wanna get your adapter on your hoses and then screw it on as fast as you can. And then I got the yellow hose, which is the center hose going up to the R410A tank. And we're gonna to wanna to flip this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. It's okay to turn it on now. And we're gonna to wanna to flip it upside down so we get liquid to go into the system. The reason you put these upside down is so that you get liquid to go into the system instead of vapor. Vapor's on the top and liquid's on the bottom. Okay, when I, when I loosen this, it's going to let refrigerant into the system. Most of the time when you're looking at the, at the low pressure, if you could get it somewhere between 117 and 120, that's usually close to where you want it. Now this one's right in that range right now, so I'm not going to be letting in very much. I'm just going to let in a little bit and then I'm going to go inside, I'm going to let it run for like five minutes and then fill it inside and see if it's blowing out a little cooler and I might let in a little bit more, but I'm not going to, it's not going to be much. So I'm going to go ahead and let some in. Okay, so that, that's about it right there. I'm going to go ahead and let it run for at least five minutes. I'm going to go fill it inside the air, inside the inside cooler, and I'm going to see how it does. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm inside and I'm filling it here. It is coming out a little bit cooler, I think. And it was coming out cool before, just not much. And now it does seem to feel better. I might add in just a little bit more. I forgot my uh, infrared thermometer uh, gun. Uh, I, would, I would test up it in there and see if it got colder, but I forgot it. So I'm having to do it just by feeling. And it does seem to be a lot more cooler actually. So, and I didn't let in that much really. I'm just gonna let in a tad bit more I think and try it again so I'll be right back okay so I'm back outside and I'm gonna go ahead and let in a little bit more there's the pressure right there it's around 120 okay I'm gonna go back inside and Check it again. Okay, so I'm inside and yeah, I can feel it. It's coming out pretty cool now. I don't, whatever you do, you don't want to overfill these units because they'll stop working. So, as long as I get, all you could do is just, if you do it this way, it's all you could do is just get it close. The only way you can get it perfect is if you, if you recover the system and pump it in with the weight scale, like I was talking about. So yeah, that's, that's a lot more cooler. I could definitely feel that. So I'm going to show you how to disconnect the hose is real fast and finish it up. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back outside just to give you one more shot of what that looks like. Looks like it came down a little bit from that 120 right in there. Like I said, uh, most of the time, most techs will try to shoot for like 117 to 120, but it'll vary. So it's very hard to do on these mini splits to get it correct, but that's basically it. So when you go to disconnect this, a little bit's gonna come out, so you just have to do it as fast as you can. You just, you just wanna twist this, this adapter right here off as quick as you can and pop it off. I'll show you what I'm talking about. One of the things you wanna do is after you shut your tank off, before you don't take this hose off yet, 
shut your tank off and then open up your line right here just to let out any refrigerant that's inside of there inside of the line you want to just let that out otherwise it could freeze your hand when you pop this off it'll come out real cold and you don't want to freeze your hand and so that's basically it I just want to do a quick video on how you can top off or add a little bit of refrigerant to a mini split and like I said if you wanted to do it correctly uh, get you would need a recovery machine to take all the refrigerant out you need a vac you need to vacuum down the lines and then you would have to add it back in per weight so like this one 2.09 pounds how much you put it on a weight scale and that's how much r410a would go back into the system so so that's basically it uh, if you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.